All right, y'all, how many times have you been here? The notes are super late. I'm putting my finger down. But the actual notes that I'm hearing are much later than what my fingers are doing. What this problem is called is latency. Now, we can fix this, though, uh, to varying degrees, um, depending upon your computer system, depending upon how big your set is and how much CPU you're using, the kind of hardware that you're using. But mostly, we're going to fix it by looking at Ableton's preferences and adjusting the audio interface buffer size. All right, so we're going to go up here to preferences. And we're going to look at this latency area right here, okay? So, in terms of latency, um, let's talk about buffer size. Um, I think the best way to describe what buffer size is, is let's think of the... Let's think of your audio stream as kind of your internet speed and your, your, uh, your bandwidth of your internet. If you have a slow internet and you're trying to watch a video on YouTube, for example, you can see on YouTube the playhead as it's going through a video, as well as how much of the video has been loaded. Okay, and so what happens is is that with more and more, uh, with a faster internet connection, you have a bigger buffer or a bigger extra amount of available um, video that's already been loaded, so that your playhead never runs into problems. So what I have right now is I have this uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i4. I have the buffer size as high as it will go um, for this. And the reason I did this is that my computer is really fast. In order to get these anomalies, uh, in order to get this high latency, uh, this huge delay between when I put my finger down and I hear this, I need to turn my buffer size way up. Some people, though, depending upon your system, will hear this buffer size issue at, for example, 512. So I've set my buffer size down to 512. I can still, I can still hear that. And in fact, I'm going to set my samples back to, to the highest setting, the or the buffer size to the highest setting, the 2,048 samples. And now I'm going to turn up the microphone on the camera so you can hear the difference in real time, and then what's happening with my voice. Blah 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 blah. blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. Do you, Do you hear that? that? It's, it's the, the same, same issue. issue. So the, the way, way that we fix this is. We, we reduce the, the buffer size, size until what's, what's happening, happening in the computer as well as what's, what's going, going into the computer are firing around the same time. We, we can even look, look at the latency change as we turn this down. So 128 samples. It sounds like my voice is pretty close. And now as a musician, I can handle that amount of latency. I can handle that. That's not too much. Okay? So... But what I want to do is I want to get down to the very scientific, exact amount of buffer size that will yield you the highest amount of, of performance versus the amount of latency that you get. And that's what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and let's learn how to use this test area uh, to, to dial in exactly um, the right settings for you. The first step in using this is set the buffer size on your audio interface at its medium setting, like 512 is what the uh, Scarlet starts at. I mean, most interfaces will just default at 512, okay? And the next step is you want to drop um, drop the volume of the test tone all the way down. <laughs> you don't want to fry yourself or your speakers or whatever you're listening through. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to set the CPU simulator all the way up to 80% right here, okay? And you can change the tone um, to be something nice and uh, pleasant, um, eh, around 390 is a good place to go. Now, uh, you turn the test tone on, okay, and you increase the volume. You turn the test tone on, and I'm going to turn on my, uh, my microphone of the, the camera so you can still hear my voice. So you increase the tone volume until you can hear it. And so that tone volume, it's just crystal clear, okay? As I decrease my buffer size, 
depending upon the performance of your computer, the CPU amount, the lower you go, you'll start to introduce problems in the audio stream. Because of the speed of my computer, I'm only going to hear those problems at 32 samples. Now just listen. Okay, so what those are, what those clicks are, are interruptions in the audio stream. The computer wasn't able to keep up with how fast the, uh, the buffer size wasn't big enough to keep up with the audio stream. But, at that lowest setting, at 32 samples, we have z close to zero latency. But unfortunately, what we're going to run into every once in a while are audio hiccups. Uh, so when we're trying to record audio and other things, it's not going to sound right we're going to get clicks and pops in our recordings, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what might happen if you have a slower performance computer. I'm going to, remember we were talking about sample rate in the last video, I'm going to turn the sample rate all the way up to 96,000. Uh, okay, so we're back at 96,000, the highest audio quality, using the highest amount of CPU and drive space that my computer can handle. So now I'm going to turn my test tone, remember turn the volume down first, I'm going to turn my test tone on, okay, and we're going to switch to the camera mic. I'm going to turn the, the test tone on, and I'm going to go down in samples. All right, so let's go down to 64. I'm hearing some clicks and pops. Let's go down to 32. So as you can tell, uh, the more you're trying to squeeze out of your computer CPU-wise, the more of these uh, errors you're going to get. Okay? So I'm going back to 512, 44.1. Alright. So I know that I'm going to probably hang out around this sample rate for these lessons in this area, so I'm going to set my buffer size at the lowest rate that I can safely know that I'm not going to get any audio artifacts, and that's at 128 samples. It's a good balance between no latency, or a very low amount of latency that I can't tell or feel, and a, a good audio stream knowing that I'm not going to run into errors. Alright, so that's buffer size. Depending upon your computer and your computer's capabilities, you can set this at different levels and get, it's going to be different for every single system, every single computer, every single combination of interface and computer. Higher quality interfaces can uh, streamline your audio stream and make it, uh, the, the, the latency is going to change for each one. Um, it's really important um, that we set this to the right level. Um, and I should also add that if you're working on a track that's got lots of plugins, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, there's a lot of resources being used on your computer, you can increase this buffer size to higher amounts as you start to run into errors um, going all the way up to even the highest amounts, and just, if you're not in the recording phase or the playing phase, but you're just in the uh, mix-down phase, uh, sometimes it's good to increase these, these samples in the buffer size so that you can, you can edit it without artifacts, you can export it without problems, and so on and so forth. So, work with your buffer size to make it so that you're, you're retrofitting uh, Ableton to um, adjust to what you're doing.